Good morning from Rwanda. We're here in Kigali, the MWC Kigali 2025. I'm together with Patrick Johansson, President and Head of Ericsson Europe, Middle East and Africa. Good morning. Nice Good to meet morning. you. Good morning. Very nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. So yesterday you spoke on the panel transforming the telco 5G and beyond the next phase of inclusive, sustainable connectivity. What were your key takeaways from that panel? Well, there were a lot of takeaways, but I think first and foremost, there is the fantastic pace of development we have here in Africa. Yeah. Now we have 5G coming online, we have further uh, 4G penetration coming in as well. And I think we estimate by, by 2030, we will have uh, 400 million 5G subscriptions in Africa. Mm. And it's truly happening at scale now. But it's also very much about the collaboration of how we make 5G as a platform, building economies. Yeah. And uh, then we have the, the payment uh, uh, services that we have as well through Airson payment platform, yeah. uh, providing connectivity uh, and, and inclusivity uh, across all basically of the continent. And again, it is happening now and that is what is truly exciting. So when we talk about inclusivity, because we hear a lot about 4G, 5G, but we still have this huge usage gap on the continent where we talk about affordability of devices and do we, digital literacy and do we have the right services for people to include them? Yeah, and I think, again, enormous leaps have been taken in the last couple of years. And, uh, and of course, it's a little bit behind in some of the stats yeah. from a global perspective. Yeah. But again, coming back to a little bit forward looking, if you look into smartphones, which will be uh, 4G and 5G yeah. up to 2030, then we'll be up to, uh, to 800 million. So it's yeah. now happening. And we see the price points uh, launched by some of the operators for, for handsets on 4G now mm -hmm. really coming down to an attractive level. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it, it is getting there, but, uh, but it, of course, uh, you know, it could, could it be faster as well. All right. But you're optimistic if you look... I am extremely optimistic. And again, just seeing how, how things pick up, because it is very much you have some early movers moving yeah. on and then it truly takes off. Right. Yeah. And, it, and I think this uh, financial inclusiveness yeah. as well is really uh, creating a new platform because, again, it is the platform for creating further economic growth uh, in the society. And then yeah. it becomes building on each other. And that's uh, it's very exciting. That sounds good. So you, so you have quite a vast experience in Africa. And um, I mean, digital transformation is at the heart of your services. If you look back the last 10 years, do you think, do you feel that things are, fa are moving faster now? Is things are accelerating faster? It, it's truly accelerating. And I think so many things are accelerating across Africa. And then, of course, as you said, now we're here at MWC in Rwanda. And I think the, the, the lead in digitalization that is happening here as well is, is uh, in the forefront of, of many countries. Mm -hmm. And I think that is another part of the ecosystem and, and collaboration. Um, different countries and different operators learn from each other on how to, to um, not only uh, provide the connectivity, but how to monetize in the bigger yeah. uh, scheme of, of, of this industry. So yeah, it, it is happening and it's faster and faster by the day. So when we look at networks, they, they evolve quite a lot. So how do you balance performance with energy efficiency and sustainability on the ground? Um, that was also a part that I covered in my in my keynote because, of course, uh, those needs to go very, very uh, yeah. close hand in hand. And uh, for instance, from us from Ericsson, we have developed specific radios for the African continent, both to uh, to um, uh, satisfy uh, spectrum needs, but also being very, very focused on energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when it comes to the sustainability part, it's also about taking care of the waste. And there, we also have a lot of good programs to so make sure that there is no uh, impact overall uh, on society. And, mm -hmm. and very, very focused on uh, net zero and, and so forth. So it, all of these things need to play in, in a hand, yeah. but it is also requiring then a further pace up because of course, more modern technology is more efficient from, from all aspects. Mm. So you actually build technology, especially for the continent, for yes. let's say the specific needs we have? Absolutely. And I think that is, is part of the, the success factor as well, because uh, it is very much about satisfying the, the unique needs yeah. of, of, the, of the continent. And um, we are. That sounds good. So beyond faster networks, where do you see the real business value of 5G for operators in Africa? I think we, we talk a lot about, about faster and better, right? But, but the, the true benefit of 5G, and especially then when you go into true 5G or 5G standalone, is that then you have a fantastic platform, mm. not only for the connectivity, but what you can build on top for private networks, can be mission critical, um, and, but also um, even more efficient fixed wireless uh, access, meaning fixed broadband um, complements out yeah. to rural cities. Again, broadening this connectivity out to, to the unconnected now. So mm. there are so many other things you can build on top. It is not only faster. <laughs> That's a, a smart statement, I fully agree. So 
when we look at the road ahead, so, so what do you see as the next big step for operators as, and, and governments to truly unlock the potential even of 5G and 4G? And I, and I think we're, we're actually only on the beginning here. And, and, and again, it comes back into learning from each other and the ecosystem be, building on top. Because you should see 5G as that innovation platform. And I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of innovation hubs across Africa uh, where we will have uh, services being developed that, that you and I cannot imagine of today. And yeah. I think this is the true benefit of, uh, of this platform. And, and again, <laughs> I've said it now three times around the ecosystem and coming that together. I, one part that I maybe didn't mention was that academia, because of course academia also plays a very vital role in creating yeah. this uh, bigger growth yeah. that you can do based on the platform of 5G. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So from an Ericsson perspective, and you see such an emerging market like Africa, what do you think think are the biggest challenges we have to overcome in order to accelerate, let's say, the impact of mobile uh, connectivity? Well, first of all, I mean, Ericsson has been in the continent for, uh, for 130 years. So we have been part of building the starting of the connectivity of, of, of the continent okay. as well. So it is a, a natural journey. And, and I think the, 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 the trick is to really turn those obstacles that we might see into opportunities. And mm -hmm. I think that's exactly what we see happening today in Africa, because it is truly accelerating and we're, we're creating a fantastic movement across the continent. Mm -hmm. So you just mentioned uh, turning obstacles into opportunities. So we see often in the public sector that technology is way faster than regulation. So technology becomes an obstacle. Yeah. But how can we turn technology in, from an obstacle into an opportunity? I think you, you pointed on the regulator as well, and it comes back to having a, a, a mutual standpoint. What is it we're trying to do? Yeah. We're improving societies. And then, of course, we need to help and educate each other so that we go hand in hand, because, yeah. of course, it needs to be synchronized, right? And I think there as well, it is about looking into leading markets, leading operators on how they have done yeah. and, and how can we, we, we replicate that and do that faster. And that's an industry overall. Yeah. And, and I think, again, um, there are maybe obstacles that we that we don't are aware of today, but may, maybe with a, or I'm absolutely convinced that through the collaboration we will overcome those mm -hmm. because there is this huge demand, and I think especially around uh, if you look at the demographics and the young population that we have sure. of Africa, I mean that is a, is an untapped potential mm -hmm. and a powerhouse. It's over 50 percent are below 30, exactly, which, which is crazy. Yeah, so. Public and private sector partnership, you just mentioned that, is, is very important. And based on your experience, do you, do you feel that, the, that there's more maturity now from a public sector perspective in using connectivity as an opportunity for digital growth? Absolutely, because it is not only about that connectivity. Uh, that was maybe the, in the, the good old easy days in that sense, but now it is this platform and how you can build other uh, services for society, whether that is in healthcare or it can be, you know, different public businesses yeah. as well that you do on top of the, the technology platform. So, yeah. yes, that collaboration has become much, much better. Of course, there are, you know, issues around uh, how to set tariffs and a few other things, yeah. but, but I think... Uh, then acknowledging the opportunities for, for building economies on top of that technology. I think that has come a long way. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. It was a very Thank insightful so conversation. Thank, Thank you. you. That was Tech African News from MWC Kigali. You can find more on techafricanews.com.